Really want to know who Superman is? <laughs> Watch this. What's going on everybody? It's your man Bishop Bang and welcome to another episode of It's Whatever with the Bishop. Magic Moments with the Mosley present. I got the founder and the owner of Yeah Yep Entertainment, my co-host, funny man Jeff. Yeah, yeah Yep. And let us know if we got this right. Okay. Alright, we, we're going to introduce you but we're going to read off some things. Okay. And you let us know what, if we're on point. For and sure. Alright, did my research. All like right. I told Madonna, I was like a stalker. Yeah. Trying to do my due diligence. Yeah. Okay. Um, so listen, proud brother of Omega Sci Fi. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, president, um, I'm guessing as well as owner of Dirty Dog Hauling. Yes. Okay. That's awesome right there. Um, graduate of Delaware State University. Three for three. Yeah. HBCU. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Penn State University as well. Correct. Okay. Right. And then um, I had another one. Okay. I don't know your role, but we will talk about this, but I know that you are super proud member and a pretty big deal of the uh, African American Chamber of Commerce of Central Pennsylvania. Yes. Right. So you're yeah, also interested in knowing your position there and um, some of the other things you do because um, when we spoke with Madonna and then also in passing of other uh, pretty pretty mm -hmm. important and special people in Harrisburg, a lot of people have always said, you gotta holler at Leland, you gotta holler at Leland. Yeah. Like, and then even uh, my man um, Juan. Yeah. One, we've been on a couple of construction sites together. Yep. Uh, my, my company does the drywall, hanging, finishing, acoustic ceilings. He's been a part of the uh, laboring and the final clean and all that good stuff. So he's also been saying, if you want to get your OSHA 30 and this and that, got to holler at Leland. So glad to have you. <laughs> Mr. Leland Nelson. Yeah. All right. Yeah, man. Glad to have Thanks you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, we'll let you tell us a little bit about your journey and just tell us a little bit about yourself so the people that okay. don't know. Yeah, sure. So, um, born and raised, raised here in Harrisburg, okay. Pennsylvania. Went to Harrisburg High. You know, proud Cougar graduate. Right, I always tell right. everyone that, uh, you know, I represent the black and gray all day. Mm -hmm. um, went to Delaware State, as you mentioned, uh, majored in accounting. And um, came back to Harrisburg to work for a big four accounting firm, uh, KPMG, for 10 years. But I've always been an entrepreneur. You, okay. know, you know, growing up, right, I took right, pictures, right, yeah, going yeah, through yeah, college. Yeah, yeah. I had my own. So, my first real business was uh, CMB Photography. Yeah. So at Dell State, when a lot of the, um, a lot of my you know colleagues were calling home for money, I just called home for film and frames right, right. and the camera. Mm, right. So that put me on to the, to the whole photography game. I didn't know HBCUs love pictures like that. Right, mm -hmm. right. I know they liked it in Harrisburg at the bars right, and all right, that right, stuff. Right. But got down there in between Lincoln, Cheney, Dell State. Then we put in Westchester, some other schools, Wesley. Okay. We had a whole network of, of photographers taking okay. pictures with backdrops and all that stuff. That's good. Got me through um, all four years really fast, and then two or three more years yeah, outside yeah. that. Then my sister, when she went to Dell State, she was able to take pictures too. So okay. it was almost like a, a, I would say about an eight year run of taking pictures. Now everybody has on their cell phone. Right, 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 right. kind of going. But man, to make money on campus, and everybody was hustling on campus, right. you know. Haircuts, had, you yeah, haircuts. Yeah. You had guys that. And we didn't have a vending machine, so it had somebody with the sand mm -hmm. club, bought a big old pack of okay. Fritos Running and Doritos. Store. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah okay. all day. So, um, and then you know, about eight years ago, I took over for the African American Chamber as president. President, and there it goes, is to help help small businesses take the next step. Okay, because you know, right now, the stats show that most people have to be entrepreneurial in nature, nature in some regard right, right. in their career. Right. They want to say, you know, even in your job, right. you have your own business, right. we're just thinking like an entrepreneur, right. and you're in someone else's business, okay. is what people are looking for innovation. Okay. So that comes from these people coming to your company and saying, you know what, I have a better way of doing X, Y, Z. Right. So me, between CMB Photography, then MMT, the right. MMT yeah, store, yeah, yeah. MMT. That, was a, uh, that was a big one for yeah. us. When I left KPMG um, in 05, it was for a deal that we had for almost a, it was about a half million dollars between you, Jarman and I, yeah. that we had to distribution deal in Philadelphia. Mm. The same guy that made um, Masterpiece stuff back then, yeah. so Masterpiece was really popping 04, 05. Yeah. Yeah. Same people that made um, P. Diddy's Sean John line right. was invested in us. Okay. Yeah. But the difference between us and them, they were making five, six, seven, ten million dollars a year. Right. We were doing 50,000. Right. But, it, but they love the brand. Yeah. They love the message of Miles yeah. Travel. Like, yeah. you know, fashion for life's journey. Everybody's going to have a journey in life. Yeah. So this is the close for that journey. So got picked up and I left KPMG then. Mm -hmm. Was there for about 18 months. And um, 
you know, we were like an R and D, a research development deal. So okay. it was like, if you're in music, it's like, hey, we'll give you one album to see how right, you do. Right. Okay. But then what happened was, you know, a, fe- a fellow Sagittarius, Jay Z dropped on Thirty Plus, give me a fresh pair of jeans and a button up, and changed the market like yeah, that. Yeah, I remember that. I was young, but I remember that. Yeah. I'm telling you, people went from, not, like you know, you had um, the snowman Jay Z yeah, wearing yeah, no yeah, shirts. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was good. Right. T-shirts, sweats, right, right, me right here. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Man, Jay Z dropped that line. Everybody went to triple. Triple cufflinks yep. with the double. Okay. We couldn't compete no more. Mm-hmm. I said, you know what? We'll pull our line, kind of do it on our own. I'm um, still, still sell a lot to this day through drama. You know, so, still a lot so of um, what was the like you pulling it? Was you did you pull it because you felt what made you, or did you? Our original, you kind of left it there and just. Well, our original agreement was um, one year. Okay. We got eighteen months out of it, so okay. that's better. Okay. I mean, they paid for, they paid off all my debt I had for the company. Okay. Okay. They gave us both salaries for a year. They put us in a nice town home. Okay. Brand new town home for a year. We went to three or four magic shows. Okay. So we did our thing. You know, we knew we learned the business. Okay. But it's a tough business. Yeah, yeah it's a tough up? business. All right, I know. I know it was popping. I seen yeah. I know it was places. I seen it, it I seen the range that it, it was, was making. We were moving a lot of units. Yeah. Um but I realized it's it's a tough business. Right. When you go to the magic show, people have like that big convention center. You literally have stores within the convention center, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you see like Russell Simmons outside doing meditation in front of Fat Farm, and Kamora's on the side on Baby Fat. They got mm-hmm. a double, a mm-hmm. double booth, and then Sean John Puppy got an elevator going to his. He got an escalator going to his joint mm-hmm. to buy okay. clothes, and it was just amazing. It was amazing to see though how many people are buying clothes out there. The industry we learned a lot from that, okay. you know. So, and then we got into when I started buying real estate in the city of Harrisburg. We got into um, Dirty dog. So mm-hmm. everybody has junk. It's not like oh, I, the fashion changes so fast. Right, right. Man, ju- a couch being hauled from a house is yeah. a couch being hauled from a house. Right, 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 right. Love that business, man. Right. I seen um, you go a little bit, and I, I guess y'all was able to move south a little bit. I seen. Yeah, we did something in Lancaster. We have um, we have people interested all the time. That's just a matter of me getting that truck manufactured right, and yeah, trucks fast enough yeah. because they're backed up. I seen something about Maryland or something. Yeah, we're looking at we, we yeah. have we have our M dot certification in Maryland. Okay. So we can do business there as a diverse business, a DBE. Okay. So like, you know, they look for DBE contractors in Maryland. We're there to um, you know, look at those contracts and see which one we want we want to bid on. Okay. Or if a prime bids on it, they might come to us and say, Hey, on this big contract, here's a piece we want to give to you. Okay. Would you be interested? We could say yes. So your name, so it's on there, so it flows through email. Yeah, so yeah. We get we get a lot of um, solicitations through Merlin, okay. big time. So it's a matter of my sister's in Baltimore, so we're like looking at that all the time. Mm. All the time. Mm-hmm. So. People don't realize like Maryland looks small on the map, but there's a lot of parts to Maryland. Maryland's big on the low. It really is. <laughs> it really is. A lot of parts. It's a, it's a lot of prosperity down there. It's a lot, mm-hmm. of, a lot of jobs. I mean, you mm-hmm. right, right down there. It's, it's cranes in the sky all through Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm getting into DC. It's a whole bunch more down there. So in yeah, Northern DC. Virginia. That whole DMV. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Because yeah. 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 the way we go, we take uh, 1115 or uh, 15 yeah. or whatever. Once you get out of the highway off of that stuff and you start weaving through, yeah, it's. Uh, a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, um, so you said you after. So that's what you got into after. Where are you? What are you doing now? Besides, what is your? Or if you don't mind, on my, my day to day, I mean, between the chamber and doing Dirty Dog. Dirty Dog is more advertising, so social media. Like, you might do video pictures, Instagram, Facebook. I do the billing collection. So, and then my brothers, it's it's, really a, it's a really a family run business mm-hmm. with a couple of friends on there. Know, Gary Fallings and we have guys. That was my wrestling know. coach. Yeah. <laughs> Gary and I wrestled coach. together yeah. in high school. I forgot to mention that you're a huge supporter of the yeah. Cougar Wrestling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been a wrestling coach for 11 years now, elementary. So, okay. you know, uh, I'll tell you what, the smile fool you. I, I catch some ankles on you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, like, what do you, like, as far as um, starting the business and just having, like, what can you share, like, the importance that you feel of being an entrepreneur and I mean, I get that question a lot. I get a lot of inboxes because of my role in the chamber. Mm-hmm. It's really, um, it's, it's unique now because like 0405, when we started MMT in 98, it was not a lot of stuff you have now. You have YouTube and, and internet right, and Google. Right, right. You can actually find, I mean, people were making six figures on some t-shirts, you know, the Philly special. So when that Philly special yeah. thing happened, a man drops a t-shirt, you order, two weeks later they're printing them and they're sending them in the, in the mail. It's amazing right, what they right. did. You could just have the design of it. Right. You might have your 
your, your shirt design, get 50 people to look at it and go, okay, you like that one, that color? And then you, you can tell them, hey, it's going to be, be two weeks. Right. So it's a lot faster to the market. But right. as far as business, I, I will say if you're interested, you know, YouTube, Google, be, you know, do the research. Do the right, 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 right. Because you can't say, well, I don't know. Can you just really right. go online yeah. and look and Google whatever you need right. and find it? Yeah. You know, but then, then get around other people and, and knowing your numbers. A lot of people just go, oh, I'm going to start like this. And they don't really know all the, the assurance, mm -hmm. website mm -hmm. stuff, the trademark. Mm -hmm. You know, like Dirty Dog's trademark, MMT's trademark. I bought my trademarks, you mm -hmm. know, so I own the brand. It's not like, oh, it's going to take Dirty Dog away from me. Or oh, yeah I, yeah, I wouldn't even expect that you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah that's a, but that's a, that's a, a lot of people don't put that money, they don't put that money up because they don't think it's better. They say, well, I don't need a trademark right there, but this might come snatch your whole Yo, thing up. But listen, that's crazy because... <laughs> You're the fourth, like, I didn't, I thought, I wasn't sure, but you're the fourth person that said that there is a lot of bogus companies, like, these people do not pay, like, but I'm like, not when you're buying this and wearing that, you could have been paid for that yep. five times yep. over. Yep. Yeah, I was, that was strange when I heard, that was, uh, Flood was talking about, like, mm -hmm. with the contract, no one gets the contracts because their business is not legit. Right. Right, it's not legit. Right, yeah, so, so so I mean, going back to the role of the chamber, when we do that on the round table, when we do the build your business boot camp, it's really take people say, okay, right. yeah, are you really a business? You're probably a sole proprietor. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Let's get you the actual paperwork, the actual insurance. Make sure you have a lot of credit if you can get if you're eligible for it, and then let's look at have an attorney really look at your contract. Okay, because. You know, you might get that first contract. It might be your worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. I had it happen to me. I had a yeah. contract. I was like, oh, yes, yeah, we're going to do this. Not reading the fine print. Yeah, that, so that they you. flipped me. That taught you. That made you. It was that an $80,000 lesson. I could take two tape by else. Yeah. Ooh. So, yeah. I mean, like, real money that I had to, like, you know. What happened? I, I mean, know, it was a state contract <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. What happens is if you have a prime contractor, mm -hmm. they have a lot of leverage. Right. Mm -hmm. And they might use your name to get a contract. They're like, I gotta have a, a DBE, a minority owned business to get the contract. Get you on that contract, they might throw you off the contract. Okay. This contractor said, Oh, you know what? Had a contract three years and six months of, of us doing part of kind of doing a great job getting paid a couple of times. He said, Oh, we're going we're gonna go a different route. When I went back back to look at uh, what my recourse was, they were like, Well, we can't you know the state that said, Well, they can do they didn't really enforce it. They didn't right. really say Hey, you gotta come in here and talk about why you let this guy go. Right. Now they do that, but back then they didn't. Okay. So that's why, you know, I'll tell you everybody watch that contract or they wanna get you out of it, buy you out of it. Oh, you know? okay. Yeah. But a lot of state contracts now say if you wanna remove that minority owned business, you gotta have a meeting to have reasons why. Yep. Performance. Like you gotta say, you know, this guy can't make it, you know, don't have the equipment, mm -hmm. can't cover payroll, yeah. blah blah blah. No, he don't have the right insurance. You get them out of it. And they'll try it too. Oh, um, try it. In the in construction field that we're in, somebody just tried that to us like uh, a week or two ago. Oh, I'll supplement you. You didn't give us 72 hours notice, and I actually have manpower here completing the job. Right. So you cannot supplement me. Because when they supplement you, they're, they're going to turn around and back charge you mm -hmm. ridiculous amount of money. Like, yeah. we might be charging the company $35 an hour for a man. Whoever they supplement you might turn around and charge you 50 you know what I mean? And, it, and this is hours of work. It depends on what, what the task right. was. But yeah, they'll do it. And MBE, my dad, um, he's the owner of the company. He likes to go after those jobs, but then there's sometimes where, depending on who is the, uh, the general contractor, he might not because my dad feels like sometimes I deserve the whole pie. If right. there's 13 floors, I need all 13. Don't try to grab me in here so I can give me four floors just so I can be your uh, minority participation. Yep. Okay. But then there's sometimes where he might be the only minority contractor, so you can have the whole pie of the drywall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you can, if you can do a job, well, I'm learning, learning things. Yeah, go ahead, go after. If you can go after it yourself, that that leads into joint ventures. Maybe mm -hmm. your company partners with another company that's small, and they kind of like on this one big project. You know, you won't have all thirteen floors, but I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take eight and give a smaller contractor five. We split Jackson Tower. Um, well, I think that the contractor ended up doing it anyway, but we were okay with it with TLC. Okay. The Jackson yeah. Tower. Yeah. We had like the top floors, they had like the lower floors, and I think we had the first floor. Yeah. And it worked out great though, because it was two minority owned um, drywall companies yeah. kicking butt for, for a big job. It was, it was prevailing wage too. Yeah. <laughs> That's the ones you want. But I mean, yeah. to your point, we, we fought hard, hard, long and hard on like the, um, we're fighting now on the federal courthouse. Yeah. Like, we did it on that. Yeah, that, that federal court, you did it on that? It got no love. 
that federal courthouse, when you look at Uptown Harrisburg on mm -hmm. 6th and um, Raleigh, mm -hmm. for that contract to come up there after 10 years mm -hmm. and then not have a real, a real concentrated strategic outreach plan, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, they'll let you know on Wednesday that they're having a meet on Friday. Mm -hmm. No, you you knew about it three months ago. Yeah. Why did I know on yeah. you know two months in? Yeah. You made a two month window, not just a two day. Hey, yeah. Friday we won't see the um, minority contractors that are interested, but no one won't show. Right? And then they'll say, "Well, no one show. It's because you give us two days. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm out there working. I can't yeah. take mm -hmm. off and be like you and send an estimator. I don't know yeah. an estimator. Really? So there's some pitfalls in a small business mm -hmm. thing that you got to be aware of. Mm -hmm. You know what sucked too for us? Um, my brother's an office manager, and we have an estimator took them almost two weeks to put that bid together. So for you not to, not only give it to us, but nobody, you know what I mean? That's like almost 80 hours plus, because they had to work overtime to get that whole bid in. And we weren't expecting to get the whole package, but it was like, come on. And then right. not nobody got any love. Yeah. It I was know, deep. So we're fighting that stuff. So yeah. It it's was a deep. lot of that. It's about that. What we're saying with the chamber now, though, is saying, hey, members, our 45 members, spend dollars with each other. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to recycle a dollar inside our own little network first. Okay. Let's do that. Let's let like that blocking and tackling. That makes sense. We try to hit our own run. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. You know, that's like, hey, you do this, I do this. If you can give me a lead, great. You know, if I can go yeah, by your, like we have, um, um, so the cupcake lady, Alicia, yeah. per uh, Alicia Perry, she has cupcakes. You know, we buy cupcakes from her. We go to personal touch for cleaning. We go to Madonna for graph design. We go to I Pray for Living for event planning. Those, that's how you just keep that dollar moving. Mm -hmm. Versus trying to go to a person that does not even know you and say, hey man, I'm supposed to be on your contract. I'm your minority business partner. They ain't hearing that. Okay. You know, they're like, well, okay. If you do get on, they're going to make it hell for you to try to get your, your money right. Right, so, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. But that's that's sense. the chamber side of things. Just advocating, making sure people share their, you know, share their wisdom, network together. A lot of networking and best practices, really. So how... Um I mean, I know the answer to this. I'm just going to ask you like that. Uh, how important is the literacy of knowing? Uh, Financial literacy? literacy or? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's important. Um, and, you know, I'm an accountant by trade, went through that stuff, but this really, I'm, I'm, I'm really a student all day. Like, I like to read. Everybody told me when I got that deal, that half a million dollar deal, the owner of that company was like, they were doing $300 million a year. He didn't mm. invest in me. He said, you know what, but you're so well researched. Be guy you give you this deal. That's what I did. Part of it was this. I just knew the industry. Right. I I just rattled off who got bought. This person getting acquired. What's P. Miller doing over here? What's Van Heusen doing? It was like, what's Mark Echo doing? Yeah. How you know all this stuff? Yeah. I've been reading every. Yeah. I read all the trade magazines. Okay. Become a student of it. You know. So that's the literacy that's in your industry. Right. They say you need ten thousand hours to become like a, a pro, a professional. Yeah. But we have people that want to do something, but you say, "What? Did you do any research?" No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can help me yeah. out, or they say I'm trying, or I'm about to, or I'm trying, you gotta yeah. do it. Yeah. You gotta do it. Yeah. yeah. They want to see how much you you mm -hmm. done on your own. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You bootstrap your own. Like if you want to open your own gym, they always say, "Oh, Bang already had that all these years. Look at all these years he's been doing this. Okay, it'll be natural for a gym, right. a B mage. It'll be natural for right. him to open up a." Yeah. But if you want bootstrap, do the small, small things, things first. Yeah. Yeah. First things first. Yeah, that's help I, yourself. I, you know, I definitely, I feel that the, the knowledge and the education part is important. Yeah, it's for sure. For I sure. be like, when the time comes, I'm gonna know what to do. I know what to do and how I'm gonna set it up. Yeah. So I come in well prepared. Well prepared. Yes. And, and you know, you built your own little. You put your your your, your clientele up. Mm -hmm. You got the testimonies. Now it's time to go. Well, I think we yeah. try to get that first home run at bat. Like, okay, I'm gonna swing swing yeah. for the fences. That's fine. But uh, if you miss a few times, then you start your credibility starts to yeah, drop. Yeah, yeah. Do what you can. Yeah. Take that one floor versus take all thirteen. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do yep. yeah, that's do, very true. Do what you, what you're capable. I even have to do that in comedy sometimes. I got to take the free gig, try to knock it out the park. And hopefully that person comes right back. I got a pay kick for you next time. Yep. Or they, they, they think about you. You're in the back of their mind now. Yeah. Yeah. I know who to call. Yeah, my man put that time mm -hmm. in. You know, mm -hmm. my role. He put a skin in the game. Yep. Yeah. It's happened for me, too. Just show up. Try to get on. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's very important. But people just want, you know, in this world of just quick, you know, you can go on YouTube and go on social media and, and see all type of things. It, they want immediate gratification. But usually it's the hard work that's put in, you know, mm -hmm. after work. After five o'clock, you're working from five to nine yeah. on your dreams. That's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How I say this without love. <laughs> so, because I, your dirty dog's been what? How many years again? Fifteen years. Fifteen. Mm. So, 
and you're just running off of one center. Well, how come you haven't? Oh, we did. I mean, so 07, we franchised in 07. I have a, in my, in my garage, I have a 320 page um, procedure manual. Okay. I have a website that can dispatch jobs all over the country okay. by zip code. Okay. And we built a system that you can order, you know, the dirty doll shirt, hat, whatever, okay. invoices, all that. We did franchise. Franchise is very expensive. When I had my real estate, I cashed out on like eight of my properties. Explain to the franchise. Is, so is franchising that? is, you know, we know McDonald's, Burger King, you know the yeah. food brands, yeah. right? Yeah. So you're taking a like, you taking a like brand, the brand, the logo, the logo brand color concept, the system, okay. and selling it to other people. Okay. So you okay. say, okay, Ooh, dope, dope, you want to open dope, up dope, X dope, more, dope. you know, you want to open up five hundred of these. Mm -hmm. Here's how you do it, and you mm -hmm. show other people how to do it. So if you ever watched that show called The Founder uh, about the McDonald's story, um, yeah, I read that. Yeah, it's a, it's a good, that's yeah. a good movie, man. I it's a movie? Yeah, I read, I read, I read the, I read the book, but I, I it's called The Founder. You watch it? It's on Netflix now. Okay, I'm gonna watch that. Um, I forgot. Michael Keaton is, okay. is um, Ray Kroc. Okay, oh, man, he was a he was a, he was a milkshake salesperson, okay. <laughs> and one day he was on a roll selling milkshakes. And somebody called his his um, assistant, called and said, "Hey." You got to order for eight milkshakes. He said, no, you don't, because everybody's buying onesies and twosies. He said, eight milkshakes in Chicago. He said, I'm going to drive up there. He told him, God, hey, I'm in the area. He wasn't even close. He was four hours away. He said, I'm in the area. I want to come see you. He said, come on up. He saw the system was like, I got to be a part of this. Okay. And we got his first burger. He didn't know how to even eat it because they wrapped it up and charged him the money. See, like, and that, and where do I go? He right. said, sit down on a bench and have your burger. That's He's a separate like, part of the story. I didn't know. Yeah. Because I didn't go into the milkshake. I just knew the brothers and you know, two brothers. You got to watch it. Blow you yeah. away. Okay. But he, he thought about, you know, you build the system as if you're going to build 500 of them. Okay. So I know how to source the whole trucks. The design of that truck was designed by me. Mm -hmm. So you look at that whole tire, the logo. We yeah, had to grab yeah. artists do the logo, the dog, but the logo, the light layout, all that stuff, the color concept, we got all all that already ready to go. So we do have people that's trying to license the brand, not franchise, but license. So licensing is different. Right. Um, I can't tell you the hours you should work or tell you what customers you can serve. I got to say, hey, pay me $10,000 a year for that dirty dog brand right. and do what you want with it. That's different from franchise says, here's your hours, here's your color. You gotta have an office that's two hundred square foot, you know, feet, four hundred square feet. You know what I mean? You gotta, right. you tell, yeah. Okay. Everything okay. you Everything gotta do. Right. You gotta be open Saturday from you know seven to three. Okay. They got your whole, and they they take a royalty fee. Okay. Yes, yeah, their brand, and and largely they show that most um, franchise brands do more, make more money than independent brands. Okay. So you're paying that, 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 that factor so you, of difference. You, you, you have to invest in yourself. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't want to talk the franchise investment was yeah. a six-figure investment. I yeah. lost all of it. Okay. So you got to be one to lose and bet on yourself mm -hmm. and just lose it all. Like, right. Oh, I, and, and that's important. Can you talk about the importance of being able to take that loss, knowing that that's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. The loss. You're going to take losses. It should be calculated. You know. You, you, you're going to learn from that loss. Right. Mm -hmm. You won't take a loss. Um, something that would have done differently because you know in that market I didn't know the market was going to be good in 07 and then dip in 08 I franchise now think about this the houses you had that had the equity to buy that franchise that equity is gone now you can't leverage that equity to buy the franchise so now mm -hmm. it's like and we're a young franchise we're one year in so they're saying well McDonald's those people that buy McDonald's franchise usually have enough you know Equity, just they have enough, right. you know, wealth. They can say, "Oh, you know what? I'm going to buy a McDonald's franchise." Right. When you're buying a dirty dog franchise, you had to go to your property and kind of leverage that, that equity to buy the, the franchise. It was just wasn't there anymore. We mm -hmm. tried, tried, tried. It was like, you know, you're small, and there's no money in you, most of these homes, and every bank was just holding on to their purse strings. They're like, nah, anything that wasn't proven over years, no. They told, they just told you flat out, no. And most of the McDonald's when they buy sis, they buy an area developer like a, like a Chick Fil A. They'll buy five. Okay. And they oh. have three years to build five of them. So is that people like Rick Ross and Magic Johnson and people like yeah. that and LeBron James because they don't gotta buy one. They're buying boom boom boom. They're buying the state of Maryland. Right. I'm, I'm gonna build twenty of them. Yeah, yeah. And give me five years. And yeah. then fourth, fifth year, if you don't make it, you default your remaining ones to another franchisee that might want to buy. Or you can sell them off. But your air developer says, we want to have a, like Arugas. Right. Arugas mm -hmm. might have their location here. Building, I heard him speak. He had a really good story. 
And as they're building out their unit, they say, okay. Yeah, they had three, three of them, right? They had 13 in total now. Really? Yeah. Yeah, they got one, one of the biggest ones at one of the um, Pennsylvania um, uh, casinos. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a big one, man. It, it's nice. It's nice show pictures and all that stuff. So he had 13. I thought he yeah. had like a few. That's one of the ones around here. Now he's franchising out. That's what's up. Yeah, so you have other develop area developers that say, I'll build four or five. They have the money. You look at their financials. They're ready to go. And they have a team that's been through this before. They kind of left Texas Row House. Okay. Now they want to do this. Okay. Or usually what you see is like a shack or one of them guys, Rick Ross. Mm -hmm. They'll have a whole system. They own... Ten of these, five of these, eight of those. Yeah, one stops and this and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're all over the place, and they build them in the same little complex. So now you have you deliver, you're delivering to this strip mall that has four. This, this guy's four companies in one strip mall. Ice cream, mm -hmm. wings, tacos. You know. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's how they do it. You get the economies of scale right there. So, so is uh, Harrisburg capable of that? Harrisburg, as far as the people, the like, people. That's owning and having that type of. Yes, you have cooperative economics. We gotta get together, pull our money. We don't. We can't care who's the lead dog. Yeah. yeah so you know what? I'd rather be the smartest person. Dude. Listen, you have to. Listen, I want to know. Can I get my money return on my investment? You know, that's what it's really down to. But people can't care about like who's up front, who's up front, who's the front person. Really, you know, get the work done. Really, mm -hmm. you know, and you mm -hmm. gotta kind of put your ego to the mm -hmm. side. Yeah, they don't get a chance. The money gets changed. Yeah. Grow. Is that why it works better for I me? Mean, not better, but is that why you have the Asian community, the Jewish community, the Indian community? Because um, it seems like a lot of them, we don't know the behind the door politics, but right. it seems like they might not care who's in the front. It's just like, let's just put our money together. Um, like, prime example, because I don't want to get the rambles. Prime example, we do hotels for this uh, one guy. Uh, he builds them, and sometimes he builds them for other Indian folks, or he builds them for himself. And I ask questions. I like to ask questions. Like, How are you doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you doing this? Yeah. Well, this is what happens. Um, it's like eight to ten of us. We all put up ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to help me get mine rolling. And in the beginning, I really might not make too much money on this particular property in the beginning because I'm too busy paying everybody back. Once everybody's paid back, then I get to eat off of this for the rest of my life. Yeah. And that's kind of how. So no one never makes it to that part. No, no, they don't. They it, they can't wait. We don't want to wait. You know, it's delayed gratification. We want the money back fast. Yeah. You know what I mean? I invest in, in some, some small companies, just micro lending, and you know they're gonna pay me the money back. I don't want equity in their company, but just like, hey, need something, nothing to get you over the hump. Let's do it because it, it was done for me. You know what I mean? It was done for me. Just so, the gratification of helping somebody yeah, get on their feet. Yeah. You know? And you see when they're all right, bought my own. They say, oh, you know, they're very bakery. Bought their own mixer. They have their own oven. They have the clientele. You start seeing, you know, they're out there really doing. It. You see them at all the festivals and stuff. You think, you know what? You see that last bit of. I see that little bit of that little edge. Yeah, the, yep, yeah. Uh -huh. but we should do more of that. You got to mm -hmm. have people put their egos to the side and understand the bigger picture. It's really the bigger picture. Um, not say, oh, you know, somebody gets credit. So what? You know what? Run your hotel, run your store, yeah, yeah. do what you do need what to you do. do. Yeah. 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 Just understand the mission that we're on versus like, it's not going to happen in one year. Mm -hmm. Most businesses, I heard Damon John the other day on um, Vlad TV, he was like, listen, six to eight years. Yeah. You have to be able to say, okay, six years out, not today, mm -hmm. six years out. Overnight success is 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. got to be willing to take that loss or that hit in the midst no. of that and bounce back too. And then you have a good product. I mean, you're talking about Sam Walton that's now dead. His company still does a billion dollars a day, a year. I mean, a day, a billion dollars a day through Sam's Club, Walmart, all that stuff. But it took him 20 years to get to where he was. He was a one-store guy. Buying out his first purchase was a, uh, a bunch of pantyhose that he bought from a truck that got wrecked. That's what he did. A bunch of, he bought that. He bought dish detergent. He bought laundry detergent. He bought some... Rakes and shovels from damaged trucks that got wrecked. They kind of mm -hmm. like run off the whole load. Okay. And he took that whole load and said, I'll buy your, you know, you rent the whole load off. Give me those dinner, whatever, cans. I'll sell them for 30 cents a piece. Dude. And now, <laughs> a billion dollars a day. He's not even here. Yeah, because think about how many Walmarts are in certain cities. Right. <laughs> Insane. Mm -hmm. Insane. So we got to be one of the, it's, it's being innovative, it's being creative, and just understanding the mission. So it can be done here. It can be, and we, we're in need some need need of several um, service goods and services. So we need like a good landscaper. It'd be good to have a good builder. Like you know, we should be able to do. With my good painter, my good plumber, mm -hmm. my good electrician. They said Harrisburg now has a housing deficit, so there's not enough houses for all the people moving into Harrisburg. Wow, 
Yeah, because uh, what I'm seeing too, um, a lot of the people, remember like back in the, not back in the day, but within like 20, 30 years up to now, like a lot of people that worked for the city and the state didn't live here. Right. Now a lot of them are down to like, they're down to live in Midtown. They're down to live downtown. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it says that, uh, you know, what they're saying now is, yeah, I want to move in town. I'm, I'm okay living here. I don't want to mm -hmm. drive my car in town rather than mm -hmm. live here. You know, I work to work. I work. <laughs> I walk. So it's happening. I've been through a lot of cities in in, in the area, that, you know, in a hundred mile radius. Yeah. It's happening everywhere. Yeah, Philly. You can so so it's Philly. They, they don't care now. <laughs> they live in the hood. They they in Brooklyn, Philly. I was in Brooklyn, DC yeah. at Vince Chili Bowl. They had a little CrossFit center right beside it. They had a little hoop lounge across the street. I was mm -hmm. like, I remember U Street. It's just, it's yeah, yeah, I've been yeah, yeah, U Street yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. now it's vibe. It's pumping yeah. down mm -hmm. there. Houses of million. You know, yeah. the, the, uh, this house would go for a million dollars in DC. I know somebody in New York. Uh, this uh, this girl in New York. She went to Penn State. She lives in Brooklyn. Has a two bedroom apartment. It's paying like two over like two grand a month. Mm -hmm. For a two bedroom apartment, she said it's like a box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But she's in Brooklyn. She now she made good money though. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. so, my thing is, is money to be made. Yeah, it so is. So we can't say that there's not money to be right. made. Yeah. You got to look at, make sure you have the right revenue model. Make sure you have something that people want. So you test it out. And you can't just make money with, from your friends. Dirty Dog is 90, 97%, 95% out other people. Yeah. It's yeah. not the city of Harrisburg. We had to rely on just the city of Harrisburg. We have been out of business a long time ago. We're in Lancaster. Dillsburg, you know, Dauphin, Perry County, Mechanicsburg, Carlisle, you know, that's what we run. Mm -hmm. a small city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's yeah. a big world out there. And you have yeah. the internet now. You can see your stuff on the web. You can ship stuff. It's just a good time to be a business. Yeah. It really mm -hmm. is. That's what's up. I feel proud. I got people driving over an hour to see me the train. That's great. Really? I didn't know yeah. that. <laughs> that's <laughs> great. Yo, that's what's up. Yeah, so I, I, I that, didn't that's know that. Me, yeah. You drive a whole hour. Yep. Yeah. Come get it in. Yep. Yeah. That's what's up. And you create their own. And you create your own lane. Like, okay, mm -hmm. that's, that's cool. You control that. When they come right. in, and bring that dollar to you. They're saying, "I like what you're doing. I trust with mm -hmm. your expertise. Right. Here's my money." Right. That's a good thing. To have somebody part with their money and give it to you. That's always. I mean, we had an MMT. So when people just come in there and buy, I wasn't there always seeing everything that was purchased, but. I'll go out and take pictures on the weekend. That's all I wanted to wear. Yo, I, well, all right, now you're in the history books for yeah. us. I mean, you, you and your yeah. brother used to buy some of the stuff. It's ridiculous. Yeah. That's all Walk I in there and go, man, look at all these people. I mean, every bar mm -hmm. to see. If we dropped something new, yeah. that, new sneaks uh -huh. came out. <laughs> I had crazy. to make sure my stuff was exclusive. <laughs> I had to make, uh, I, listen, I need this, turn this, this color, I need yeah. this. I, yeah, because everybody <laughs> had it, so I had to make sure mine jumped out. When you seen other people mm -hmm. with on, they'd be like, Psh. He had that. Nah, this was especially for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was fun to see. Yes. And it, it, it's great seeing other brands now too. So I know um, Marvin works out with you. I see a Vanani. I remember yeah. he first came to us and said, "Hey, I want to start the business." And so we can't be afraid to share knowledge either. You right, know? right, right. I don't think anybody. You know, you can have my knowledge, but you might not have my my work ethic. Right, right. I might be giving you the same exact scenario, the same cards I have here. Take yeah. my cards, and you may not be the player in the way I play. Right. Yeah, you might not yeah. be able to. Right. Man, yeah. what happened? Well, look, I gave the same cards I right. had. Yeah, what that happened? blueprint. Yeah, I, and I, I respect that um, because I wouldn't take you as that type not to give you the blueprint. Yeah. That's, that's what you want to mm -hmm. do. If you can't follow it to the letter. Yeah. You know. That's you. But a lot of people hold the concept. I understand some, some uh, you know, sometimes proprietary information. But you got to say, oh, okay. I went to um, someone out started the hauling business that used to, we used to do work with all the time. And he was like, you know what? Here's how you do it. And give me his mechanic, he, you know, Mr. Penn, Mr. Pendon, you know. Oh, Mr. Gary Penn. Yeah, Mr. Gary yeah, yeah. Penn. Yeah, yeah. around the corner Penn. from him. It was the same church and all that. He was doing all my property. We were doing yeah. all the properties through him. I used to borrow his truck, but yeah. we got so busy, I had to buy my own truck. That's yeah. how I had My dad still calls him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he got to get, like, like leaves and, um, like, my dad got to bag up the leaves and stuff in the fall. Yeah. Call Gary up. Get Gary over here. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Pendon, yeah. he's already retired, he's still doing retired state trooper. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, other people came to him, how you start this holding business? And I'll tell him, man, hey, here, the truck, here, like, get the uniform. And he started that as a retiree. Like, he already was cool off his pension type, not yeah. to tell his business, but I know he was fine. Because my grandfather was a, a retired state trooper. They were, they served together. So, my grandfather moved to Vegas and, <laughs> and, and 
And Gary was like, I'm getting me a truck, man. <laughs> and he jogged in the morning and hauled stuff after that. Yeah. 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 So you say that, just so people will know, so when you start a business, it's not good. you rather base it on years. So it might not happen that first year. Right. Just to stick with it. Not to automatically think that, you no, know, right. since it didn't work this year, or you're not getting that sort of support, you have to... Right. You, I mean, you got to see what your what your hustle's like. You know, how much desire you have to really be in your own business. It's going to take some time. You know, I, the, I think sometimes we read these one-offs that these unicorns say, man, that guy did that in a year right. or two years. But you don't know how long he was working. You don't mm -hmm. know how poor. Give him the one year. But like my man David Shans from out of Atlanta, he has a, a brand called Sleepers for Suckers. He says, um, you don't know how many other businesses I started. He says a book. He has a company called Secrets okay. for Suckers. Well, it's a t-shirt brand. Okay. He has a book um, called okay. Dreams Are Built Overnight. You okay. know what I mean? Um, really good guy. You got to look him up. But right. um, he'll say, you didn't run all the businesses I, I started before I had this one. Yeah. So I had all the accumulation of all those experiences. Then when I had this one year with this company, that's right. I did it in one year. Yeah, that's when that worked. Yeah. The other ones took, you know, three years, two years, yeah. fell, fell, fell. Then right. you pivoted and said, I'm going to start this. And that one succeeded in one year, but it took all your other failures. Cumulative mm -hmm. that got you where you are. So it still was that cumulative. Oh, 10 years of messing up. Now this one hit. But that first time entrepreneur, you know, that's, you're just crawling. Mm -hmm. You really are. Yeah, because now, I, to me, it's like, I know the lane's already been there, but it looks like it's just, especially with trainers and all that stuff, and virtual trainers and this and that. I'll be like, it's everybody. It's a lot of people. Yep. And it, it's just, you just have to. Stay the course. And you have to stay the course. Like I had a brand that we started three years ago called Mosquito Pro. I saw a guy, that guy from school that, I was like, you know, I'm going to start, we got mosquitoes up here too, man. Yes, What's now? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, we have, we have some mosquitoes up here. Mm -hmm. Took the, bought this truck, put a new transmission in it, built a whole brand around it, trademarked it, because I own the trademark. And uh, I probably kept that company open for about seven months. I was like, no, because I remember I was spraying someone, you got to put the little backpack <laughs> on. Yep. Yeah. I had to go, go to training and become, I had to learn, I had to take the test Okay. to become, you know, you get your, um, I forgot that number, it's, it's some number you put on the side of your truck and it, it, it qualifies you to have and like, deal with these different chemicals and mix them up and all that stuff. I mean, you're spraying, if I spray your backyard, you're getting bit 10 times, we reduce the threat. But when you start here, you spray, you spray okay, you're getting bit 10 times. I spray, you're getting bit twice. Man, my daughter got bit twice, man, you got to come back again. So we had all these resprays. I said, you know what, this ain't the business for me. Because people didn't, people didn't really understand, you're just reducing the threat. Yeah, you ain't gonna stop. It's outside. It's outside. Yeah. My next door neighbor might have a puddle, yeah. a big old bucket of water. That's what they're attracted to. Right? Yeah. People's crazy. <laughs> Any water. If you had, if you had that, yes. cup, that cup right yeah, there, and water in that cup, they come in. You can put a thousand, a thousand mosquitoes gonna be bred out of that mm -hmm. cup. Yeah, them things. Are and so, so my neighbor, you might have did your barrier right in yeah. your house, but then the neighbors. True. And like they, they come up ready to feed. Mm -hmm. True. They bite you. You're like, uh, call back, call back, mosquito pro man. Yeah. And I did about five of those. I said, you know what? Crazy. Nah. So you couldn't have put it in the contract that look, it's this, this is going to happen. And you know, social media is very powerful. You got to make sure that they don't, you know, black. Hey man. Yes. Like, I said, ah, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get out of this thing. Yeah, the blast. Yeah. yeah. Let, yeah. Let, let the big brands like Terminex and them guys deal yeah, with it. Yeah, my policy is True Green. Yeah, yeah True yeah. Green. They do. They have a little sticker on the side of the that say mosquito. Yeah, you got to take. You got. You got to be able to eat that blow nowadays yeah. with, with social you know, media. You know what? You're right. I still do get bit if I'm at somebody coming it. for you on yeah. social media. You are gonna have to be able to eat that in this day and age because they can destroy your company yeah. or try real, mm -hmm. real fast. Yeah. Yelp, you know, and it's a Google review. So I said, you know what? We're spending money on something that we really don't know. Right. I know jump from let's just buy new, newer trucks and right. put more advertising in that. So it was a good pivot. Sometimes you got sometimes you got to cut your losses too. Mm -hmm. So you're a millionaire. Mm -hmm. I want to say that no, I'm not. I'm not no, I'm not I'm not that. no, no, <laughs> no. Try to baby. Harper's <laughs> tough. Harper's tough to make a million. I mean, it's, yep. it's a it's tough. And I mean, if you're in construction, you can probably cause they're bigger. They're big job. Right. But you know, to go. Um, you know, our average job is two hundred twenty-five right. hours. Right. So that's a lot of work to make. Right, a and, I, and, oh, I, I and, and I and I and I say because it's the area. Like if I was in like trainers in Florida, or yeah. they you charge like, more, right? Yeah, it's Florida. Yeah, you know. So you look at it, it's still town Pennsylvania. Like, yeah. you know, 
you know, it's foster living. Yeah, but you can do you can do what you can. But yeah, see, that's, that's what you gotta do it too. Everybody go, goes, they go absolute numbers. So you go, okay, yeah, like you said two thousand for the apartment, or or a million dollars for this house in D.C. You gotta always bring the the cost of living factor. Yeah, how much are they being yeah, paid? Because right. it balances yeah. out. Yeah, it balances out. When that person has to pay X amount for rent, you gotta charge that. That's why they are a millionaire. Yeah. They're spending. Still spend eighty percent of their money on living. Right. So you might say, you know, I have to do this much in this area and still be when I factor it, I'm making this much money. Mm -hmm. If I was in D C the D M V, most of my um, you know, companies I know down there are they have ten trucks, they're doing a million, two million dollars in business. But Harrisburg's like a you know, we have several junk haulers in, in Harrisburg that are not legal, you know, they got a pickup truck in their home. Yeah. Stuff, so right they illegal dump places. Hang, yeah, hanging off the side. Mariba. Yeah, they, they do it. They do it, man. I, I like that they're making yeah. money, but it's like, okay, are they so right? Are they qualify? Nah, they, they ain't. ain't. You know they no. ain't. You can look at the vehicle and yeah. tell they ain't. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're going toe-to-toe mm -hmm. -to -toe with most of the big national brands in this area. Most people think we're a franchise. Are you a franchise? Are you a national brand? And listen, we might we took that little pause from 08 till now. But now people are starting to ask a lot more. We're in a better position to do it right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. We know how to get the trucks. We know how long it's going to take, the lead time. We probably could deliver a truck to your doorstep so you're in whole, three months. So you're the Jay-Z. <laughs> the Jay-Z of what? Of just the, we, we're both Sagittarius. Yeah, like that's, that's, you're, you're, yeah, that, I'm, I'm proud of you. I want to try, man. I want to try. See, a lot of people don't. You gonna miss every shot you don't take. That's basketball right. tournament. You know, like wrestling. Take the shot. Yeah. Okay. So people, as a wrestler, you go, man, I only lost five four. But you could have lost, no, um, you could have lost uh, seven four. You didn't take the shot. He got around, got two. So mm -hmm. what? It's the loss. But we like that little margin, man. We beat by a point. I don't care. I had that type of loss. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I still have my head. Does it? Does it work? That. All right. So I'm not not taking that from the bro your brothers because I don't know. Um. So whose vision was it? Who, whose vision? Because when you look at it, like you know, you are, you you got the knowledge. You have you make sure everything's in place. You you are the man that signs the dotted lines. You read the paperwork. You look mm -hmm. at. It. So like, was it your idea? Was it something that you just wanted to do? And you knew like, did you have to sit down with your brothers and say, you know, I mean, you know, the pictures came. Every I seen Jeremy used to do it. Your pops mm -hmm. used to do it. Mm -hmm. um, you got all so, that. Over that. Like it was like everyone, like everyone took the pictures, um, mm -hmm. but like you and Jarman with the clothes, and like so did like did you just say, Jarman, you're gonna make the clothes? No, it's how did that funny work? story about Jarman. Jarman was in a, he was in Georgia at the time when I came back from Dell State, and my line brother and I we played Omega. Mm -hmm. um, he had a nice little design, but he is, he he's from Jersey, so he, Mark Echo was really big in Jersey. He just kind of rocking yeah. was doing some crazy stuff. And he was drawing some. I said, Man, I can take that home and had a design for you. Kind of a designer in Harrisburg. He said, All right, yeah, get a couple shirts made. So we made for that home 97 Homecoming, 98 Homecoming, Jay Z, Memphis, Bleak, and um, somebody else was in concert at Delsey. I said, We're going to make black, black with gray and white, gray with black and white. We just made six of each. Okay. You know, everybody wore the shirts big. Yeah, so yeah. Made extra large, double X, and just wore them and kind of like, you know, threw one of Jay Z on stage. He threw it back in the crowd. You know what, I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but we tried. We uh, say, <laughs> throw it up there. He did. He grabbed it uh, and threw it back out. But, you know, it's, uh, hey, at least he touched it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And um, we, so it was mainly, and when Jordan got, got back from Atlanta, he was wearing the shirts and stuff like that. He was like playing ball on it. He was more of a polo head, like Tommy Polo. That's, that yeah, was that yeah. time. I said, John, man, you gonna help me wear this as gear, not as your work. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. But the washing he, car. <laughs> yeah, he took it. He took, the, he took, the, um, took heat to him. Was like, okay. So we had a heat press machine, we had the four color um, screen print machine, and he he learned it. I don't know how to do any heat press or screen printing. It was him that's trying to learn and being part of the journey. You know what I mean? Okay. And just taking his his his. Ability to like art, you know, he likes art, doing okay. art. That's why, that's stuff. why I yeah. so he already liked art. Okay. Yeah, so he yeah. took it and ran with it. I don't know how to do it. I couldn't make none of the stuff he okay. makes. I just kind of like put together the vision. Like, he just followed. You know, Sometimes it takes that though. Yeah. yeah you play your role. Like, yo, yes. coach, be the coach. I'll be the quarterback. You be the owner. Like, okay. We all play our roles. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, you can make mention. We, just, we have a sidebar about it, but just know what your role is. Okay. My role is to make sure we got more and more deals. When I gave him that deal in Philadelphia, it was the biggest deal. The guy was like, we never do this. You're coming here to be doing $5 million a year for us to even consider you. 
We'll give you the R and D deal because we just like the research. Five million before we even consider. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He said his thing was, and we went, we went to the garment district in New York. The guy was like, the owner was like, hey, I can call Puffy right now. We can walk down, you know, whatever Fifth Avenue, and we can find ten celebrities. He'll bring them back to this garment district location, and we'll give them in, in his room, his show, we can hand out stuff to all type of celebrities. Now, he used to just, he didn't really do marketing, he just gave everybody, everybody had a product. So for like Christmas, you know, Madonna, and Madonna the Madonna would mm-hmm. come with, whoever would come to this, the, the studio with this box, this take clothes, and, hey, here's something for your uncle, your aunt, your right. kids. It will, you start seeing them wear it at the football game, the basketball game, baseball okay. game, branding. Okay. The product was on everybody. Okay. We didn't have that, you know, we was like, what's the MMT? So we had to do like more of like, this is for everyone, because, um, Celebrities fade. Right. Right. Brands come and go. Yeah, right? yeah. We see them happen, but uh, even now, it's more just your own sense of style. And a lot of people have their own brand, which is lovely. You know, they print their own shirts. He press their own stuff and put it on the street. Yeah, I wear my words. That's how that's what I wear. You have to. You got to wear your own stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But a lot of those brands that collapse, they're owned by a major conglomerate. So they didn't like, care, right? Well, they didn't care, but it's not mm-hmm. a big. It's not the end of the world for them, right? Like, oh, that full oh, we got something else coming down the pipe yeah. anyway. Like. They're looking for a dis- distribution model. Like, okay, you know what? We can get them. We're already doing this. And then we look at China. When I looked at brokering from China, when we did that. Lady came in that was doing all everybody else's brand. She came in, met me and Jarman and I. We went through that for like a whole week. She took it back to China, made our product. It was amazing what they made. But you gotta have a broker. If you don't have a broker, they're gonna watch that container come off the. Off I've the heard port. of that before. Yeah. The stuff will be on the port for two months. You'll miss the whole season. Okay. You gotta pay. Everybody gets paid. The broker, this person, the handler, the port guy, they all get paid before you, your product touches down. So you need those people in place. Yep. You have to get That's the support. purpose of the, the re- doing all your research, yeah. right? Yep. So they can go to the port and your package will be sitting there. With them. You gotta have that person that you're, that broker handler that you want to say, hey, make sure my stuff will come here. It's on the truck coming back. To, it's coming to New York. It's coming to Philadelphia. So, what do you think? Most people's uh, what would be the downfall that with, with small businesses, why they, why you think they don't survive? I, I think I always say I think it's access to capital. Access, and you don't need a whole bunch of money. You don't. I want to see what you execute with no money. Because what happens is money gives you a false sense of like I got enough money. Just keep on throwing money at it. Mm-hmm. Not like that. It's gonna be oh. how you execute. I want mm-hmm. you to do. I want you to do more with less. Cause mm-hmm. you can you can throw money at it and it not produce enough. No, nope. you just burn cash. Burn. I've been there. I, I, I sold those property. I had all this cash put into franchise, and that money's gone. I, I could have doubled that money by putting it in my back pocket. That was over a hundred thousand dollars in real money that is just is gone. You know what I mean? That'd have been good to have that. Right yeah, now. yeah. But yeah. um, you know, it's a hundred thousand dollar lesson or better. But a lot of people just it's access to capital. So it's just having that, you have a false sense of, oh, I got this money, I just keep on throwing money at it. But really it's your execution. And being hungry enough to guy get out there and do what you can. Like I love the, the, the Damon John story. I didn't know that everybody thought FUBU was everywhere. They had the same six shirts. Do you know this? Mm-mm. They had the same six shirts. They would dry clean them and put them on different celebrities. Com- when, that, when that video was over, I get my shirt back. Put it back on the hanger. It, everybody thought it was everybody yeah, wearing FUBU. Why? And Jamie Foxx, this person had, Hello, cool had a red, they had a red, <laughs> black, blue, and whatever color, yellow. They had the same shirt. They would dry clean them and put them on different celebrities. But they just was in the door that they could do that. Yeah, yeah. But I like what he said. They said, man, I just, we didn't have a whole bunch of shirt to give away. People were like, okay, how this? No, I need that back because my man will be wearing this next week. It was like that. So that's the that's the hunger you got So to were have. they paying them to wear it? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I, I know. Um, I don't think uh, I think LL man might have had an equity stake or something like that yeah. in the same neighborhood, but um, eventually I think it got so hot that everybody was just wanted to wear it. You know, okay. it like they could have been younger than those guys or their peers. Like I'm a re- I'm a represent. You know what I mean? So they're in the same little like fashion entertainment thing, on with your brand. If we had a real good run, they had a crazy run. Mm-hmm. They're still making yeah, money. I, I had mm-hmm. Google, still making money, man. Still making money. Clothing are I like well, now. I like clothing like this. Direct to consumer, make yeah. it. I can now because we used to do like this too. This is the ill part. You would buy, you would make it for twenty five dollars. You can only mark it up to like thirty five. They will sell it for eighty or seventy. 
it had a double, they would double your your whatever they paid for it. Right. But you can only make you can only make like ten dollars on top of your product. Right. And it, the stores made the money, so now I can make something for thirty five, and sell it for seventy or twenty five, and sell it for seventy. I'm making more margin. It's it's more with less. Okay. You know what I mean? Cause you only sell a hundred thousand units. You sell ten thousand. That's why I love what Queen Latifah said. She said for her own distribution to make a million dollars, she has only sell like, um, you know, three hundred thousand copies with a three dollar margin versus like I gotta sell 10, 10 million copies to make the same two million million dollars. Mm -hmm. You get like fifteen cent on every yeah, per copy. Yeah, yeah, it's different, man. Mm -hmm. So going independent is really cool. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you make some money. Yeah. Can, can, I want to talk about this because I know we we still good on time, but. Mm -hmm. I want to take it deep for a second, because um, a lot of folks in the inner city, and it comes to a point where you got to know better, and you got to want to do better, but some don't, like, what do you say to people, like, how do I want to say this, a lot of people lack professionalism, they, they might have the, the, the drive and the grind to go get it, but they might not either be people persons, or might not know how to talk to somebody who's a, I don't want to say superior, yeah, you can't, I don't give a F how much money you have you yeah. you gotta show respect to that person you ain't gotta kiss no butt you know what I mean but like you you, you feel what I'm yeah. getting at like yeah. you you gotta have professionalism and respect for for people if you're trying to kick down doors and you need to have the same respect for your consumers as well but like I want to talk about that real quick like what do you have to say like or where do we start do we start do we kind of ignore the old heads who might like can't teach an old dad new tricks or do we keep trying to teach them why they're young like yeah, that's a good question you know what I mean that's a good question. I mean, those businesses you see a lot of time on Facebook, like you open, you hang, you, you know, you have great promise, you hang your shingle, you raise such a business, then your hours are not your real hours, your product is, is, is inferior. <laughs> and, you know, you probably really, what we pride ourselves on is being like uncommon to the industry. We want to show up on time, mm -hmm. you know, be uniform. We have over 40 uh, reviews on Yelp. We have over 60 reviews on Google, five-star reviews. So we try to pride ourselves on just doing because now, for us, for our, for our culture, what happens is if somebody gets tagged as man, bang, didn't do a good job. Now everybody associated gets the same black eye. Right. You know what I mean? And we do it in our, in our own culture. Like, you know what? I try to use this person for my um my daughter's wedding. You know her my daughter's yeah. birthday cake. It didn't show up right. They're never you and rightfully so. Yeah. I can't really blame them because yeah, I'm putting my heart on my money yeah. putting it out. And you give me a product that's not good. Mm -hmm. I've seen that too. Somebody might not give a damn about this certain customer. It might give the the next customer like a hundred and ten percent. Like, yeah, you gotta give. I think when it's your product, you gotta give it your all. Yeah, that's who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or don't or don't be in business because yeah, yeah. a lot of people are faking. Like, there, it's some good businesses out there, but it's one that just kind of like they're getting over it. I'm gonna use you one time because it's in me to try to recycle my dollar. Yeah, right. But then you might see see me time two or three. Mm -hmm. I gave you one time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I might, some may tell you, some might say, you know what, I ain't going to tell them nothing. It's your nobody now. Mm -hmm. So try to make it the best experience possible because not just your business, it's everybody around you. They may go to them and say, nah, I'm not going to do and it. See, I, I, I like that because y'all spending money with each other and you're not looking for nothing free. So, right. like, because you know you sell something, they sell something. So, if, like you said, it recycles. And not because you're running the people that your circle is just like everybody. There's always that one that just wants something done for nothing. Yeah. And yeah. I always feel like I avoid people that sell something but don't buy nothing. Right. Right. I, I, I feel like I ha I'd rather find someone else. I find someone else that supports. Even if you're not supporting me, I need to at least see you supporting mm -hmm. someone. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and not looking like you're just always on the, the, the receive end. Yeah, you're always yeah. receiving, not there. Yeah. You know, it, I might not buy from you right now. But I went to the market today. This this company I, I buy my little shea buddy butter from. I didn't buy this time, guy. But no, I kind of yeah. bought for like weeks on end. I yeah. got a supply yeah. now. But I said, hey, good morning. How you doing? And kept it moving. But he knows I support. It might be every time. Right, right. Mm -hmm. you gonna see me like once a quarter. But it'll stop. Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. When I get my you know, stuff, it's right. time for me to go. Let's go. But they're yeah. there. They're yeah. doing a good job. I brought different customers to them. So it's a relationship. Right. Yeah. You're right. Some people just take, take, take. And they never say, hey, man, what you got going on? Right. Whatever I got going on, let me support you. I don't care if I got to buy a shirt or right. support you, you know, your son's baseball tenor league and things like that. Do do that. Mm -hmm. It's all helpful. You know, buy a raffle ticket. 
I, yeah. I, I think yeah, that too. I think knowledge is is worthy too. I think even if you give me something that's gonna help me grow, that's that's bigger yeah, than monetary. Yeah. yeah. Yep. To me, I think that's bigger than that's bigger than the monetary. If you give me something that I can make more money, like right. she was saying, if I mm -hmm. teach you how to fish yep. versus just giving you the fish, mm -hmm. you're gonna make more. So I look at it, if you give me any type of knowledge and I'm good with that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what what I'm happy about is when people see our our family doing something, they say, "Oh man, German could do it." Then we could, you know, like whoever they might associate with, that they can do it, and I can do it too. That's good. Because right. sometimes you gotta see somebody jump in the pool first that you know, and they go, "Oh yeah, oh, I feel you." You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They don't want to do it on their own, but you get out there and show that it can be done. You have first mover advantage, but then that person may follow behind you. You know, they say, oh, man. Or they'll tell you later on, like, even back at, in college, I see people at home coming, like, yo, man, I find some of my clothes, or I start taking pictures, but I watched you for two years at Dell State. I'm like, I didn't even know that. Right. You know what I mean? But, but I remember somebody came to my door I'm at Dell State and knocked on my door and said, man, I, I've been watching you for two years. I know you're about to graduate. I'm going to start taking pictures. Put them on. He did, now he's doing, like, videos. He got he probably put out, like, ten calendars. I mean, just doing yeah. some amazing work. Yeah, but I was like, I'm gonna give you the game. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna see if you want to execute. Execution is key. Mm -hmm. On that other day, you know, execution over excuses. I saw a shirt for that. The guy sleepers for sucker, suckers, David Shands. He has a shirt that says that. Exe you know, execution over excuses because we can make a make a reason why we can't do something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But try and like, get. Just take that first step. Take a step. It's more than you did yesterday. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And sometimes it's like you gotta take your broken tools and just say, I'm gonna start with this, man. You know, right. I don't have much, but you know, like when you start your 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 spot down the basement, how many weights did you have? Yeah, I did, yeah, I showed it there. Yeah, I had like no weights. Yeah. I had a couple dumbbells on the floor. Yeah. That was it. It was empty down there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you keep on making investments in it. You yeah. know what? I'm gonna buy this now. You know what? I'm gonna yeah. buy this now. And before you know it, it's like, wow, how do you get all this equipment? It took yeah. me seven years yeah, to get yep. all this stuff. Yeah, I tell that's why I tell people all the time about them all over time. You buy that stuff at one yeah. time and go, baby, you no know way. Here you go, put it on my car and I'm yeah. take it over with me. Oh. Yeah. I told Jarvis, I said, when we get more weight, you let me you know. We get, we get a kettlebell or something. Cause we might scrap it. Now we yeah. know you got, hey, take the, take the plates over to him. Yeah. You know, when uh, my man Lamar Banks, rest in peace, that was at yeah. McDevitt, he was mm -hmm. a McDevitt guy. He went to Dell State with me. He had a place called, um, he had a, fit, a, a CrossFit place uptown mm -hmm. on um, Sixth and Division. We got him a big old truck and trailer tire. The flip yeah, tires, yeah. Mm -hmm. man, this would be the flip. He said, man, you bring me two tires, I'll give you a membership for you know, a month. Right. So we did a barter. Yeah. Bought him two big old tires. And, you know, as part of his, you know, he was looking for those flip tires. Yeah. You, or you could hit him with a sledgehammer. Yeah, yeah you do some barter. But yeah. it's, it's, it's fair exchange. I do a lot of that. Yeah, I, do. Right. I, I got, got cameramen. I got all types of people. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, I need you to do this. So yeah. I got you. We just go. You know, and it's good business, you know. Absolutely. I feel it, it's game. Yep, yep. So we definitely, uh, we're coming up on time. Thank you for coming. Um, you can tell people where they can reach you or reach your services or whatever. They okay, so uh, the website is DirtyDogHolland.com. Same thing for my Instagram and Facebook page. The Chamber is, chamber website is ChamberForUs.org. Chamber for um, Instagram, Facebook, um, Instagram, Facebook, and our website. So. Okay. That's where you can find us. I mean, we're going to have a nice thing happen with the chamber, but we're going to have a startup link on our website. Mm -hmm. A lot of people ask me, how do I start up? It's going to be A through Z, how you start your business in Pennsylvania. And we've been through enough of those now to know, like, here's your PowerPoint pitch deck. Here's how you go through your numbers. Mm -hmm. And you got to go through scenarios, too. Like, okay, scenario A, B, C. What if I get 10 clients, 5 clients, or 1 client? Okay. That's a different number. But everybody thinks I'm going to get 100 clients on day one. Mm -hmm. Never like that. build it. Word of mouth, network, all of that. Yeah. Funny Man Jeff. Funny Man Jeff. Funny Man Jeff. Oh, I'm on Facebook, Jeff Stanton, Instagram, at Funny Man Jeff. Uh, got some shows lined up, so I'll, we'll, we'll be um, talking about that the coming weeks. All right? All right. Yeah. Thomas Johnson got something for me, so when that flyer come out, I got y'all. All right. It's your man Bishop. You know, you hit me on Bang Bang Fitness or uh, Bishop Bang Bang on Instagram. You know, take care of yourself. Drink yeah. Water. Get strong like us. Love, you know what I mean, <laughs> but we definitely thank you, man. This is this is good. I, I can listen to this over, and yeah. you, you definitely sparked something that was already in me. But you gave me it's like 
take it pre workout. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Them pre workout dances, man. Ah! <laughs> you got me. You got me excited, man. I, I watched them growing up, so I, I I just used to be like, man, they it was the unit yeah. togetherness that I always paid attention to, and yeah. it was big, man. And y'all were there for the community. Yeah, always absolutely. have been. It still is. So I definitely thank y'all. Appreciate you. Appreciate you for taking your time. Stop through. You know, your, uh, good old Saturday. 